Hey, what's up, guys? So, the point of this video right now is to kind of test, uh, and by test, I mean just kind of do something because I'm bored, um, a new concept slash thing that I might do more of if it gets uh, any good positivity, I guess, in the comments or if it gets likes or views or whatever. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here. I'm going to deconstruct this motherboard uh, CPU and RAM and uh, this power supply. Well, I'm not going to deconstruct, but I'm going to take off all the components and I'm going to put them back together whilst talking to you. Basically to show you how easy it is that it, while distracted me, a not, believe it or not, I'm not very experienced. I built my first computer uh, less than a year ago. Uh, January uh, 2019, so the beginning of the year, and um, at, ever since then, I've built a couple of the same PCs to give away, and then I've just switched parts around to my other ones, so I'm really not that experienced, and because some people, I've had people who are like, I'm too scared, I simply can't, I'm going to talk to you guys while doing this, if I break it, well, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, but um, basically, I do want to, during this video, I'm just going to get started uh, disassembling uh this motherboard this is a uh, gigabyte ultra durable ultra i can't english ultra durable um z97 motherboard um it has the intel 4790k 4740 oh, that came off 4790k as i break off the heatsink um it is an old cpu um but this system uh is something that you would find for budget you would buy this used and i got this whole kit uh, including the RAM, the RAM I got for 30 bucks, and the CPU, Intel stock cooler, and the motherboard I got for 150 so $180, and is almost a full computer. Um, the RAM, I'm actually very surprised it works, so I want to talk about it. It is ECC memory. This is server-grade memory. It is meant to be used in professional servers to check for errors, to stop any data loss, etc. If a RAM stick were to fail, there's error checking to make sure there's no... I think I'm wrong about that. I think it's just to make sure if, like, a piece of data gets sent to the wrong place, there's an extra chip on the RAM. You'll notice these are 16 gig, no, these are 8 gig DIMMs, um, but there are 5 chips on each side. Um, the fifth one is for error checking. This motherboard will not allow the ECC capability, so it just acts as DDR3 RAM, which is amazing. Um, so, basically, this is all used stuff, and I'm, so this is working. I don't think I need to prove it now, because I'm Assuming it's going to work after. The Intel stock cooler, I got to give it credit. It's mounting is super easy. There's no screws. You just push it in, push in all the screws. I actually haven't taken this off yet to see CPU. Ah, yes. That is some horrible thermal paste spread here. Um, let me see if I can show you guys. It is definitely a... Four this is a nice 4790K, though. I do have to admit, it is good looking, and it seems to be kept in good condition. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I can't zoom in because I don't have a camera man. But basically, if you can see the CPU, the thermal paste has not spread out correctly. Now, I'm not going to directly blame the application. It could just be... I mean, the... the actually, I could be incorrect here. Because the, the heat sink seems to have a lot on it. It's just it doesn't look like a lot of state on the CPU, which is absolutely fine. So it actually appears to be fairly new, as in it's not dried on there. So really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of these uh, Q-tips and just wipe it off. Very simple. Definitely not the smartest idea while it's in the socket. You really don't want to push on a CPU while it's in a socket. Not the best idea, but like I said, casual, probably going to break it. Who cares? I care. Um, I do want to test the gaming performance on this system because if it is good enough, my original plan was to buy it and sell it and use the money to build a, a another budget PC for 6K subs uh, if we ever reach there. But, um... If this is good enough, if it's better than the budget PC, the $500 budget PC that I would build, uh, in terms of gaming and maybe uh, other performance, I might just give this away. Put a GPU in it, put it in a case, and give it away. Now, the GPU and the... Oh, there we go. Uh, the GPU and the power supply that I'm going to use now are just my... Te this is not the GPU I'm using. It's just going to be there. We're going to use that one over there. Right there. Um, I would not give away. I'm just using them to test because I don't really have extra like GPUs I can just put in and be like, oh, I can give this away. Okay, so the Intel CPUs, I hate taking them out of their sockets so much. Oh, that was painless. Oh, I want to address something. So, 
this is kind of our PC tip number one. Notice how I have it on a motherboard box. Now, this is not the box it came in um, because this is used, so it didn't really have its own box. Uh, this is just a motherboard box I have. When you buy your PC parts to build your PC, assuming that's what you plan to do, um, to test the PC, let me actually, uh, do I have do I have napkins of any kind? Um, I'm trying to find everything here because I don't want to cut and make, and you think I've like done something in the meantime I've cut, but I might have to do some editing. Um, I have one more Q-tip, right? Yeah. Let me see what I can get. So, you notice I have it on the mother box. This is a great way to test your system before putting it entirely together. Um, I'm just casually wiping off the thermal paste because it, I, although it looks new and I have validated this has, was working fine beforehand, I'm actually probably just not going to wipe this off the CPU and then just leave what's on the, there's enough on the, uh, the cooler itself to be really plenty because you really can't go like gamers nexus made a great video it's really hard to have quote unquote too much thermal paste now obviously there's not there's it can get messy but until the point where you're like leaking out into your motherboard no real issue should arise as i just clean this off like I said, the plan was to sell the CPU because these do sell for upwards. You know, you see them selling buy it now for like 150 to 200 dollars on eBay. Now, of course, my eBay has begun getting like plagued with like negative reviews because I people keep buying things for me. I won't ship eBay items to a shipping company. It, there's too many ways to get scammed. These are tiny. I I have not I I use been having Ryzen CPUs. I ha I could grab one, but I don't want to waste time. Um, and these are this is very small compared. Yep, this is a Intel Core i7 4790K. It is four gigahertz um, boost to I believe 4.2 or 4.5. I have no clue. Um, it's, it's old, but the reason it sells for so much is because it is still good. It is a very good CPU. People like this CPU for a reason. The 4790K is basically a re-release of the 4770K that was just a little better. And people just seem to like it. Um, even this motherboard sells for a lot because it is Z77. Z, Z97. Different things. Z97, which is the, uh, you know, like we have Z390 now. It's basically the overclock motherboard. And people seem to like that. So, I have disassembled this entirely uh, while we we're talking. Um... So that actually brings me to the next point. That was so easy. I just disassembled a computer. Uh, this is basically a whole computer. I put on the graphics card and then plug in the power supply. And then here's our SSD. And done. That's a whole PC. It's super easy. I can sit here with w new three. I'll give it. I could probably flip this for $300. $300. 150 for the mobile, 150 for CPU, or 200, 150, something like that, right? $300. And I'm just casually talking to you while just doing it hopefully incorrect. So I'm actually going to tell you guys, every time I install a CPU, I like to explain exactly how to do it because I don't have an overhead view. People have told me to get one. I can't. I don't have enough money to get a second camera that has the equal quality uh, of this one in terms of this is not like a super high quality camera. This is a $500, which is people say, well, that's a lot. It's a 4K camera decent quality. I have to get a similar one to make the video not look super weird and I just don't really have that uh, in the budget. Now, basically, I'm taking the CPU, and on the CPU, there's a little gold triangle on... It's right there. You can barely see it, but uh, if the CPU is facing down like this with the words readable, bottom right, or if you're looking at it, bottom left, and on your motherboard, there will be... You would hope. One could only hope there would be a similar triangle. This motherboard seems to want to be a... So, we're going to actually switch to part B, which is we can just look at the pads on the bottom and the pins in the socket and see where they line up. Uh, this is, wow, there's no triangle on this motherboard. That is tough. I'm assuming it goes in the way it normally does. Gently installing it into the socket, making sure it's in there. Hoping we didn't mess it up. No, it lines up. Honestly, if you if you don't see the triangle, if it lines up, it lines up. With with the 4790K and the Z77 motherboard, it lines up so that the motherboard and the CPU words on the CPU face the same way. So you can read the words when the motherboard's facing you. 
you know, down ways like you'd have it in a case. Uh, and then we just simply close the CPU in there. Like I said, I'm sorry that you guys can't see a lot of this. I really just, I don't, I wouldn't want to do this whole, I'd either I do a whole video overhead or I don't. There's really no in between. Done. We have just, let me lift this up without break. I have to lift it by the right parts. I've already broken off the heat sink, which just is held on by some pads um, and some actual screws. Or, oh no, it's just like pushed into the board. Kind of like a, yeah. Basically, installed just like that. 4790K, painless. Um, I'm going to put our RAM in. So basically, it's DDR3. The notch, or, or the little space in between, obviously it's not centered. On DDR3, it's much more, it's actually a lot easier to tell where that notch actually is. Put in a little bit of force. This motherboard is actually a little bit bent. Uh, you can actually barely see it, but it is a slight bit bent because of... I have no clue. Probably from installing RAM. Not it was like that when I got it, but it still works fine because slight bendatures uh, on motherboards really just doesn't mean anything half the time. Um, another thing is so another reason I'm, I actually thought about using old hardware. Uh, yeah, I could take that PC and, and take it apart and rebuild it. Actually, I kind of want to to make sure everything's uh, my 2700X still works. I haven't tested yet um, after I broke it and fixed it. Um, is Older hardware is not as durable, even though this is, I actually just thought of the irony, this is a ultra durable motherboard, but every time new hardware comes out, it's more and more durable, as in more resistant to static shock. I'm currently only wearing socks. I would show you, but I think there's a rule against that or something like that. My floor is not carpeted, but I'm not wearing an anti-static wristband, because I just don't do that, because that's kind of weak. Uh, I suggest you do, though, because if I don't and you break something, you're going to blame me. Done. RAM installed. Um, older hardware is less resilient. So I'm using older hardware. Um, newer hardware that costs the same price. Probably be a lot stronger. Not meant to. Really, it's so hard to break stuff. You're more likely to break a, pre a pre-built than... Uh, it's more likely to get broken in shipping than to be broken by you. Uh, let's install our SSD. Um, we're using a 256-gig NVMe SSD. It's already got our Windows and some games on it. Um, there won't be game testing in this video. I do... I'll probably just do ga game testing... Well, I don't think I'll make a video. This is a 4790K. I'm too late on the bandwagon on that one. But, um, it is it is good. You can check out the performance. I Game testing is just to see, does it beat a budget system I could build for the same price that I would sell this for? If it can, I'll give it away. Uh, 20 lucky winners. It would be a, a gaming-only system. This would not be like a streaming or recording system. It'll have an RX 580. It'll have a 4790K. Um, this would not be a streaming system. Just word of warning right now. International as usual. So, NVMe SSDs, or M.2 is the, is the term, actually, are very easy. I forgot to take the screw out. Uh, best practice is to leave the screw. That, Like I said, you can't see any of this, and I'm so sorry. Whatever you can see is best. Best practice is to leave the screw in the motherboard. Now, of course, the entire standoff just came out, which is a problem, which means I need... Hopefully, I have... Oh, that one's over there. Dang. I don't have a pair of pliers. We might have to move to plan B, which is... I don't actually have one. Okay. I have to grab pliers. One sec, guys. All right. That was the one cut that we'll have. Like I said, the reason I'm not cutting is because I don't want you to think I've done like anything extra in the video, and I'm lying to you because I try not to. Kind of like my thing is to not lie, because there's really no reason to when there's nothing bad to lie about. Basically, i got to put the standoff back in. I don't know why uh, other people have, other companies haven't figured this out. Props to Gigabyte, however many years ago this came out, because this standoff has, it has the screw hole for the um, screw to go in it, but it also has a Phillips head cutout for you to actually screw in the standoff. My Asus Prime X399A, the motherboard box you see here, the $300 threader for motherboard, couldn't come up with that. I I had to basically YOLO it in there and push, hopefully the screw would come in without it. It was so, it was so dumb. Oh, ended up breaking everything. Oh God, I can't get it in. Okay. So, for anyone wondering why this SSD has a giant, that is a heatsink on it, it's because this was just a regular boring NVMe SSD. I was like, you know what? 
this honestly, I don't think this heat sink's really doing anything because I don't like load insane. I don't really edit off of this SSD like I should. Um, it's just to make it look cooler to match that red and, and black motherboard more. I don't know. I just think it make new Gen 4 PCIe uh, SSDs uh, look like that. So I thought, you know, why not join the bandwagon? So let's um, put on our cooler. I'm using the Intel stock cooler. I don't have another Intel. I don't have another Intel socket cooler except for on my systems already. So the Intel stock cooler is so easy. That's the that's the one thing I have to give it. It is the extremely easy. You just put it on where you want it to be. Hope you didn't just get thermal paste everywhere. Hope there's even enough thermal paste. And figure out how to push this into the board. See, I'm having a struggle, so I stopped talking. One of the uh, the sides of the Intel cooler went in, and none of the other ones will. So let's just pull that out. So if you've been here for any amount of time, if you've seen me build on maybe on a live stream I built, um. But there have been a couple times where I've built things. Um, you will notice, or even, I don't even know if I have. I might be going crazy. But it is quickly noticed that I struggle with coolers all the time. I just cannot seem to get coolers where they need to go. The only one that is so easy for me right now is the uh, is one of the AMD coolers. The ones that just screw into the motherboard. Because those are easy. You just screw them on. The, uh, the Wraith coolers. I uh I gave up on the stock cooler that came with my 2300X um simply because it what should I say hold on so okay so all these have to be turned they there are locks on this so why wouldn't there be okay so I just praised the cooler And I'm starting to regret that. I literally can't get it on now. I cannot get this cooler onto this motherboard. Normally this would be a part I would cut out because it's embarrassing. But I'm just going to show you my struggle. This is, this is the struggle I'm having right now. Did I like break it? Am I... Do I need a manual for the stock cooler? I can't tell which way is locked and which way is open because there's just arrows. Do those arrows mean push to lock? Welcome to building a PC with someone who really doesn't know how. Like I said, not very experienced. I have never installed one of these. I thought it was easier. Oh, got one side. Oh, got the other. Oh, got thermal paste everywhere. <sighs> thermal paste is my favorite as I get it all over my desk. Okay. Alright. So, full admission, in every one of the pieces I've built, I've had some kind of just like dumb problem. And I don't mean like, oh, the CPU was working. I mean that's something dumb caused by me. Um, and this is, this is one of those cases. I just, I always do something that just makes things not want to work. Socket H. And this is one of those times where I just started to think I, I should just not be allowed to install. I always, it's the cooler, man. Hold on. Is there like a way to tell which way is locked? Oh, this side literally just broke. Okay, so we actually broke the cooler.
There we go. There's probably going to end up still being problems, but who cares? Okay. Much better. Now that's what I call properly installed. Okay. So this is why this is my only problem with this system. Honestly, if I if I give this away, I will probably put a liquid cooler on it. I, I don't like this Intel stock cooler. Not only do they are they just bad, um I don't like the way this mounts anymore. I liked it, now I don't. That's why Another good reason for AMD, their stock coolers not only come with their CPUs, but are better. End of story. Now, we have successfully built the motherboard. This is everything that goes on it for now. Next, you would put it into a case. But like I said, this is just, we're testing it. So next, we're going to grab our graphics card. And here comes the reason we put it on the motherboard case. Not only is the motherboard case anti-static because it's cardboard or whatever, you can hang the graphics card because it has this stuff on it right off the edge. So we will just put that on there. Oh, you can't even see the good side. Oh, if we can even do this right. There we go. Wow. That really... I do not like the way that sits. It's not like breaking because it's resting on something, but still. Whatever. That'll just lean like a beef. It doesn't have like those armor slots. And it's very top heavy. Okay, whatever. That works. Next step is the power supply. Now, some of you may have noticed uh, and are screaming right now. This is a 1300 watt power supply for what is probably maximum a 300 watt system under load. So, some of you are sitting in your seats going, whoa, isn't that going to blow up your system with the amount of power? So, this is a lesson I have, many people have taught, and I actually should say it as well, because so many people actually don't know, which is understandable, because um, it's kind of an, an assumed by a lot of people that people know this. Power supplies, in especially modern, modern ones we'll talk about, any one that you would buy now, um, power supplies now, for computers, they do not send electricity. They do not send current. They do not send voltage through your computer parts from the wall at, you know, that's not what they do. Your components, your graphics card, your CPU, your motherboard, your RAM even, they draw power. And that's a big distinction to make. For the reason is, my 1300 watt power supply will not be pushing 1300 watts at all times through the system. What it will do is each part, the graphics card will be like, okay, I'm under load, I'm drawing 1.5 volts or whatever, I don't actually know a good amount, and 100, 100 watts, right? 65 watts or something like that. That's how many, that's how much power will come from the power supply, from the wall into the power supply. The power supply's job is just to convert wall power into wattage that the computer can use in its form of electricity, uh, limiting voltages and stuff like that, because you don't want your wall power to go directly into it. This is a VGA cable, basically. Also, so another question I've actually received is questions about things like mo modular versus not modular power supplies. Also, by the way, the more over... I can't say the second part of that word, but, you know, you know whatever I'll say. The more overkill your power supply is... YouTube's rules, the better, actually. I mean, of course, don't spend a ton of money, but if you are looking to spend a ton of money over, the better your power supply is, like the bigger wattage and the better efficiency rating. This is 80 plus gold. It's EVGA, my go-to company. The actual more efficient it'll run. So that's a good rule of thumb. Um, so that's why I always go, even on builds that don't, like even on budget builds, I will go a, at least 100 watts over what is the recommended for efficiency and upgradability, because that's the point of a computer, to be upgradable. Uh, so, back to my point, modular, not modular. Basically, modular and not modular, basically just refer to the, I, I don't want to say upgradability, but basically the connectivity of the 
power supply. You'll notice this is a fully modular power supply. I am sitting here plugging in cables into the power supply, meaning I can pick, they are labeled on here, which cables I need for my system. I don't need SATA power. I don't need this kind of power. This is SATA, so I don't plug that into my power supply. I need CPU, GPU, and motherboard. That's it, I think. I could be, could be missing some. It's not that bad to miss some every once in a while. So that's all I get to plug in. Modular power supplies tend to be more expensive than non-modular power supplies or semi-modular power supplies, which have some cables connected directly to the power supply. You can't take them out, and some that you can connect yourself. Um, basically, the two that most people get are either modular, like this, fully modular, which is my favorite. All of mine are fully modular. I mean, I have one that's not. I would never use it because it's not, like, branded. And uh, I like modular because... You get to pick what you need when you need it. So if I'm building a 10 GPU system, well, actually, six. There are six GPUs or VGA power slots on this. So, you know, that's the point. Let's find a power cord, and let's just plug this in. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to address here. There's probably a thousand million questions I've missed. And this is probably going to turn out badly. Hey, this is actually, even as a semi experienced person like I said not that much experience even as a semi experienced person I am still not a fan of just power supply on the desk like this this should be fine I would never leave it like this forever um but cuz I could rattle and stuff like that um but this for testing should be fine it it is fine I'm just not a fan of it <laughs> fan um really at all so let's just turn it on and see what happens well nothing's going to happen cuz the reason nothing's happening, nothing is drawing power yet. It's not even turned on. So, I'm going to take this screwdriver. And another tip that, honestly, don't, I'm not going to show you because, I, like I said, can't. Um, but another tip that you guys should know. I'm actually going to turn this on because I do really want you to see this graphics card. Oh, no, you won't be able to. That's so bad. Hold on. Let's see if we can get this over here. This cable looks like it's short, but it really isn't. It's just kind of... I'm trying too hard to make you guys see this GPU. Um, you guys can see that, hopefully. And everything's in the way of my mic. But basically, everything is... I didn't plug in the 24-pin connector. Well, it wouldn't even start up uh, without it. Yeah, rule of thumb. The power supply won't actually start up until it gets that power draw from the motherboard. See, power draw. So the 24 pins is what does that. And I think that's everything I need for just a test system here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this screwdriver, which is metal. And there is, in here, there's the front panel connectors. Um, there are two connectors in here, two pins, that are for the, um, to start the system, the power button. Um, this one is color-coded, and I believe they're red. I'm going to take a guess, it does say power, and I'm going to just bridge the connection of these pins, and the system's going to turn on. Um, modern motherboards, a lot of them have, um, whatchamacallit, it's, they, they have like onboard start buttons for this exact case. So I'm actually going to move this, now that you've just seen that the graphics card's pretty. Okay, none of the cables are correctly aligned. Um, let's grab... Uh, display port cable from oh shoot welcome to moving stuff around this is a long video and if you watched it then it's working meaning that I've been able to keep you here interested in either what I'm saying what I'm doing or you just want to help me get watch time all three are worthy causes now how I know this fan is, is plugged in correctly the uh, CPU fan I have done this so badly like I said, this isn't a tutorial how to set up a test bench. This is mostly a... This is a bad idea. Alright, let's see if the... I don't even think... I don't, you can probably see like the corner of the monitor. It turned on right away. Um, we should be in Windows. Yep. Wow, that was quick. It's almost like this SSD had Windows installed already. This is getting worse and worse by the second what I'm doing here 
Ah, USB 2. The only problem with the older boards is they have a lot of USB 2 on them. Alright, one second. I'm going to cut while I log in, just in case. Alright, so I'm going to check Task Manager here. We got a CPU. Last time we turned this on, we didn't have a GPU. GPU is not appearing, but it exists. Oh no, it does appear. AMD Radeon RX 580 2048 SP. 8 gigs of VRAM. And our CPU is a 4790K oh. yep, at 4.0 gigahertz. Alright, so this has worked. My thing's about to, my camera's about to run out of batteries, so I'm going to make this quick. What was the point of this video? Literally just to sit here and build a PC in the stupidest way possible. Because it is so safe and easy. Even with older hardware that is not as durable, even though, like I said, ultra durable is hilarious, as newer hardware, because it gets more durable every year. That's kind of like one of the improvements that's made by time. Um, of course, this is my GPU that I decided to stick in here because I didn't, I didn't want to deal with a liquid cooler right now. So it's really easy. It's so easy that I, a pretty, as you can see, I struggle with the Intel stock cooler. A pretty bad builder <laughs> myself can just sit here, talk about the most random stuff, usually having to relate with computer hardware, hopefully, and just build and complete. This is a full system, completely done. Um, right here, this is it. All you gotta do is put it in a case, and you're done. Simple as that. It's very easy. All I did, well, and I even took it apart first, install the CPU, put in the RAM, put in the storage device, which I, I recommend M.2, it's very cheap now. Um, 30 bucks, 240 gig SSD, M.2, pretty easy. I put on my stock cooler, which I, I wouldn't recommend stock cooler. Well, I wouldn't even recommend Intel at the current time. I'm touching my hair a lot because it's so bad right now. Uh, I wouldn't recommend Intel at the current time. Uh, just no budget proposition, uh, and that's kind of like what my content's focused around. But really, honestly, there's no not really that much performance gain. There really is like, and in some games you can actually find Ryzen beating Intel, um, new Ryzen. But that's besides the point. Uh, very simple. I want to see, the main message of this was actually the power supply thing, because that is a big thing people always come to me about, and they try to like argue it. They'll be like, no, no, you're wrong. Power supply too big can wreck your system. Like, no, it can't. It cannot. It's impossible unless the power supply shorts. In which case, usually bigger power supplies tend to be, you know, made better because they're more expensive. Um, and there's more power going through them. Or well, there can be more power going through them because usually they're put in bigger systems. This is completely overkill. This will have like a 300 watts maximum, right? This is 1,300 watts. 1,000 watts overkill. Why not? 80 plus gold. That's the point. So it's super easy to build a PC. I was just chilling. Why not build a 4790K? It's just sitting here. I need to make a video. I hope you guys watched this whole time. It was you know, watch time. I tried to cut as little as possible so you don't think I'm doing like anything sneaky behind the scenes. That's the point. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. That what? Peace. It's a salute. Why did I? Whatever. Later, guys.